Hello and welcome to this tutorial from Profoto Vector. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create and edit an HDR merge in Affinity Photo. I'll be using version 1.9.1 which is the latest version of Affinity Photo at the time of this tutorial. Here is the final photo we'll be creating for today's tutorial. This is a combination of three exposure bracketed images. I recommend Googling how to take exposure bracketed images with your specific camera model if you're not sure how to do that. But in order for this to work, you are going to need to take exposure bracketed images with your camera before you import them into your computer. Most cameras will take three exposure bracketed images. Some will take five, seven, or more. In this case, we'll be working with three, so I'll go to File, new HDR merge to start this process. And here we have our new HDR merge dialog box. The first thing we're gonna do is add the images we wanna to combine to create an HDR merge. So I'll click add. And I've just got a bunch of photos here that I took. These are all exposure bracketed photos. So you can see here, some of these look normally exposed, whereas some look underexposed and others overexposed. So basically what we're gonna do for this process is we're going to click on the normally exposed photo. This was taken at a zero exposure. Control click on an underexposed photo. So this one was taken at minus two exposure in my case. And then we have an overexposed photo here of plus two. So I'll hold control, click on this one. These are gonna be the three exposure bracketed images. And all three of these are gonna be raw files. These are not the JPEG versions. The ones to the right are the JPEG versions, but I will be using the raw files here. And so I'll come over here and click open. So there are our three exposure bracketed images. For starters, make sure automatically align images is checked. So obviously when you're taking three different photos, even though they are one after the other, there are gonna be some things that are gonna be slightly off. In my case, I took this photo using a tripod. So pretty much for the most part, everything is going to be in place here. If you did not take your exposure bracketed images using a tripod, you might wanna change the drop down here to scale, rotate, and translate. That's just another method for automatically aligning your images. But below that, you have an option to automatically remove ghosts. So you could check that if you have moving subjects in your photo. So let's say you had a person walking through your photo or maybe you had a branch swaying in the wind. This is gonna be a good way to automatically get rid of any ghosts that might appear from those objects being in different places in different photos. Noise reduction is exactly what it sounds like. So you may have chrominance noise, which is going to be color noise or luminance noise, which is basically light noise. So let's say you took a photo in a darker environment. This is gonna be a good way to just automatically get rid of that noise at the beginning of the process. You can always leave this unchecked and use the denoising filter later on in the process if you prefer to do this manually. Otherwise, leave it checked and do it automatically. In this case, the photo is pretty bright, so I don't really need this right now. Finally, the tone map HDR image. I recommend having this checked. It's going to open up your final HDR merge inside the tone mapping persona. And it's going to automatically apply some tone mapping here, which basically means it's going to change the value of pixels or the range of value of pixels so that it better matches what can display properly on your computer monitor. So in this case, it's going to automatically brighten up these areas here, which it's already done in this example. So these are like the mid-tones and some shadow areas. And it's going to darken this area here, which is an overexposed area in the sky. I'll show you what this looks like when the tone map HDR image is unchecked, but let's come over here and click OK. So this is going to align our images, perform the HDR merge so that it keeps the pixel values from each of the three photos that we want to keep. And then it's going to tone map this. And here we are once it's finished, we are opened up inside of the tone mapping persona. So let me just scroll my mouse over slightly. This is the combined three images. Let me come over here to the image that did not have the tone mapping applied. So this is an HDR merge without tone mapping. You can see this area here in the sky is still overexposed because this is not being corrected for our monitor. And then this area here is pretty dark. Also, this was opened up in the photo persona by default instead of the tone mapping persona. So then we would just carry on with our image edits from this persona. So let's come back over here. This is with the tone mapping checked. So now we are opened up inside of the tone mapping dialog. And this is where I recommend starting off editing your HDR merge photo. 
So you'll see over here, there are a variety of presets here in the tone mapping dialogue or the tone mapping persona. So here you have dramatic, this is black and white. You can also come over here, you have three other options. So you have extreme, crazy, and James Ritson customs. So I'm gonna go with extreme here just for demonstration. So you can see this is obviously creating some pretty intense effects. So you guys can play with these on your own. I'm gonna go with the default and I like to go up top here to detail. So this is a pretty good starting point in my opinion. So now if we come over here, we have the tone map tab and this is where we can create further edits and customizations for our photo. And let me just try to center this up a little better. So for starters, you have this checkbox here, clamp to SDR. That just means clamp to standard dynamic range as opposed to high dynamic range. In this case, it's not really gonna do anything because it's already created that adjustment. But underneath that, you have tone compression. So this is set to 100% right now. If I back this up, you'll see what happens when this is not compressed for our computer monitor. So in other words, the pixel values here really haven't been adjusted and you can see this area now looks a bit more overexposed and this area a bit more underexposed. So when we turn up the tone compression, you'll see that just creates a better balance between those two areas. And then you have local contrast. This is pretty similar to a standard sharpening effect. So if I turn this up, you'll see this will get sharper and sharper pretty much. And I think you could also compare this to like a vibrant slider inside of Lightroom. But let's turn this down and you'll see that's going to reduce the local contrast. And you can see here it's going to add almost like some smoothing to this. And it doesn't really look natural in my opinion. So I think the default value here when we're set to detailed is a bit too high. So I like to go down a little bit. Not too much though. Maybe about like right here. And so we still have some detail without there being too much. And the reason this is like a sharpening method is that the local contrast is basically adding contrast to the edge details of your image. Anytime you're adding contrast to edge details, that's the same thing as performing sharpening. That's how the Unsharp mask filter works. So now let's scroll down here. So the next option you have is exposure. That's obviously going to increase the exposure values here based on how your camera would do it. So if you were to go up to exposure stops on your camera, it would basically look like this. In this case, I don't need to do this. I think it just kind of blows out the highlights too much when we do that. The black point is going to shift the point at which pixels in your image are deemed pure black. So if we shift this to the left, there's gonna be less pure black in the image. And if we shift it to the right, there will be more. And you can see the result of that. So in this case, I don't really need to tweak it too much, if at all. And finally, we have brightness. So this isn't gonna be quite as intense as exposure value, but it will brighten up the image slightly. So again, I don't like to overdo that. We're gonna leave it there for now. We could always come back to that later. And you can always uncheck this if you don't want any of those adjustments, or you can leave it checked. So let's scroll down here. The next option is going to be enhance. So this time we have a contrast slider. So as opposed to local contrast, this isn't gonna be as confined to those edge details. It's really gonna add contrast throughout the entire image. So there you can see I've added some contrast. Below that we have saturation. So you guys should be familiar with this if you've edited photos. This is going to increase the intensity of the colors. And you can see here that there is a lot of orange and red inside the rocks here. And so that is going to increase in intensity, in my opinion, at a higher rate than what's going on in the background here. So as we turn the saturation up, this area is getting really orange and yellow, whereas this area is only subtly adding more color, more intensity. So what I like to do here is just get this to a point where I like the saturation in the front rocks. And then the next slider here is the vibrant slider. That's going to increase the saturation without affecting the skin tones. And because these orange rocks here are pretty close to skin tones, that's going to allow us to increase the intensity of the colors in the back here without affecting the front. And we can also decrease the saturation here a bit increase the vibrance. So let's scroll down here to white balance. You guys are probably familiar with this as well if you've ever done photo editing. So white balance is either going to allow us to add warmth by adding an orange tinge to this or a yellowish tinge. And if I go the other way, it's gonna cool the image off by adding more blue. 
In this case, I do want a slightly warmer image. And then tint is going to be adding either green or magenta. And in this particular case, I don't really like adding either of those, so I'll set that to zero. We'll come down to shadows and highlights. This is going to either increase the pixel values of the shadow, which usually is going to bring back some of those details. So you can see that happening mostly right here in the back here a little bit as well. So if we go all the way up to 100, you'll see what happens there. In this case, it looks kind of blown out. It looks artificial in my opinion. So I don't really want to add too much back to the shadows here, if anything. And then for the highlights, it's going to be the same thing. We're either increasing or decreasing the pixel values in the highlights. So usually you're going to decrease the value there. But you can see in this case, it's kind of making the image look flat. So I'm not a huge fan of decreasing the highlights there. You could increase them if you want to bring them out more. But I think in this case, we can keep them set to zero. I think because this is an exposure bracketed image or an HDR merge, we've already sort of taken care of the imbalance between the shadows and the highlights. That's kind of the whole point of this. So below shadows and highlights, you're going to have detail refinement. That's just going to be sharpening. So this is going to be pretty similar to the unsharp mask or the local contrast. So if you wanted to increase the sharpening in the photo, you can increase the amount. Whereas the radius is going to increase the area of the edge details. So if maybe you have larger details in here, you can increase the radius. So there you can see the result of that. Here's before, here's an after. And finally below that, we have the curves option. This is just going to be basically a tone curve. And you can always increase the area here by dragging this portion down. So the top right is going to be the white point. You can either drag this down and that's going to shift the white point down and make the image darker. Or you can shift it to the left. That's going to brighten it up. Of course, if we brighten this image up, we start to get that overexposed highlight area there. So I don't recommend doing that. And down here is going to be the black point. So we can either add black pixels or we can remove them. I'm going to keep that where it's at. And what we can also do is create a sort of S curve here. And of course, anytime you create an S curve on your tone curve here, that's going to add contrast. So here is a before, here is an after. And of course, you can also adjust the individual color channels here. And that's basically going to create like a color correction effect. I'm not going to go through that now, but once you've edited all of the areas here, you can go back through and see if there's any adjustments you need to make. For example, I'll probably add a bit of brightness here, and I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do for that. So you also have the overlays tab here. This is basically a way to locally edit your image, and you could do that by adding masks. And you'll see over here you have the add brush overlay or the add gradient overlay. In this case, I'll show you guys an example with the brush overlay. So I'll click to add a brush overlay layer here. And you'll see here I have now a brush head. I can adjust the size and hardness up here. And now let's come over to tone map. So let's say I wanted to increase the exposure. So let's increase this a bit. And now anywhere where I paint using that overlay option is going to increase the exposure of that area I painted on. So in this case, I'm just going to increase the exposure of the rocks here. And you can also play around with this after the fact and just see what this looks like with more or less. And this is just allowing us to get some of those details of the rocks out more and separate them from some of the other elements here. All right, so that looks pretty good. Once I'm ready, I can come over here and click apply. And that's going to apply all of my changes from the tone mapping persona to my HDR merge image. And now it's going to open this up into the photo persona. So from here, we can make further adjustments to this if we want. For example, let me come over to adjustment and let's just add some simple levels here. And I'll exit out of here. And there's our final photo. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can also check out my website at profotovector.com. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.